On today's episode, I'm going to show you how I designed and 3D printed a nice stand for my rotary tool that I bought at Harbor Freight. It was really low cost, but it came in this plastic bubble pack and really no good way to store all the bits. So I'm going to show you how I did this on today's episode. So here's the final design, but it hasn't been grouped together yet. That way you can see the pieces and how I put this together. It's really just block elements, each one 20 millimeters wide, and then different heights to form the stacked effect. Now another trick that I did is I overlap the pieces, and you can see it here on the side. I overlap just like one millimeter, that way I know the plastics are merging together. The slots for the bits, I just used a cylinder and made that into a hole. The front ones here for the collets are six millimeters in diameter. And then the upper ones are 3.25 millimeters in diameter, that's for the smaller bits. The tray is just another box element and just turned into a hole. Now I put it 1.5 millimeters from the bottom, so that's how thick the bottom of the tray will be. The holes further up are 3 millimeters from the bottom, and then the next row will be a little bit higher at 5 millimeters from the bottom. This kind of stacks the bits so I can get my fingers around them without hitting the other bits. Now the upper bits are a little bit bigger and they're four millimeters in diameter and that's so the larger shank bits can uh, fit up there and they're a little further off from the bottom in this case uh, 21 millimeters and then the top row is even further up but the same size so I really got two size bit holes and then the bigger ones towards the uh, next to the tray. The rotary tool was made with two cylinders that I converted to holes. One was a larger one that was 34 millimeters in diameter. Now I positioned that larger cylinder uh, off the bottom slight amount because I wanted to put a smaller diameter one in there to form a pocket. So I placed the larger one 10 millimeters from the bottom and that was the base from which I would work. And then I put a smaller one inside of that and I position that one at five millimeters from the bottom and that forms the pocket I want. Well here let me move this wall so you can see it a little better. So the smaller one is 28 millimeters in diameter and goes deeper and that will form the pocket I want. Now after making a first prototype I found out I needed a higher wall in the back to hold the tool in place. The pocket wasn't doing everything I wanted. So in order to do that I had to group everything together except the wall so these holes would be in place otherwise they would take away material from the wall I need to put there. So now you can see the pocket that the two holes formed. But here's the wall that I slid into place and I did some quick measurements and I found that 16 millimeters tall and 5 millimeters deep fit pretty good because it allowed space for the cord to drape over the wall and still hold the tool in place. So now I had to make the wall part of the whole unit. So I grouped the whole thing and then hit group and now I had my finished unit. So here's the finished unit and then I go up to design, download for 3D printing and select the .stl format. That'll give me my STL file that I'll send to XYZWare. So now I loaded the STL file into my XYZWare software for the DaVinci printer. Now I like to look at this thing as it builds and look at it from the front. Plus, I like to put my prints more towards the front of the bed because I've got an adjustment right there in the front so I can adjust the bed to match the print rather than just being in the middle where there's really no adjustment. So here's how it looks and then I like to also export rather than just print because then I can make a file that I can save and reproduce later. So I set it to 30% uh, fill and a 0.2 layer height and a thick shells. This gives me a good circle around all the holes for the tool bits. So here's the image of the object after it's been sliced. I can click on the info button just to verify the parameters. And everything looks good, except for this. Nine hours to print this guy. 
I guess I better go do some other projects while this thing runs. In fact, I'm not even going to do a time lapse on this guy. <laughs> it's going to take too long. So let's just uh, let this run to the printer and we'll look at it when it's done. Okay, so the print is done and it's all cooled off so it should come off the bed pretty easy. And it does. It's, it's loose. Now I put glue down on top of the bed. I had the bed adjusted to you know really squash it down like I've showed in a previous video but I still put glue down especially for the corners because I want the corners to stay flat I don't want them rounding up and the heated bed can only do so much so the glue does help in that particular case especially something this big because ABS plastic uh, which is what the Da Vinci is using right now really you know wants to shrink sometimes especially the corners so I found glue in the corner is really important and this one is is perfect I got I gotta clean this off with some water take the glue off but these corners are flat and smooth it's they it came out really good now you can check the holes make sure that the bits fit there's a larger one that fits good now this should this should be yeah it's loose here but these smaller ones it fits those just fine. There's another big one. Good. And then the uh, the tool itself fits in good. And you can see the cord just moves out of the way. So now I'll put the rest of the bits in and it's ready to use. So this is the final stand with everything in place. But this was actually my first prototype before I did the design that created this. And I learned a few things. One is the back of this didn't have that support. So when I put the tool in, it was too loose and could flip around. The other thing is I didn't have a spot to store all the loose little bits like the sharpening stone and a few sanding stones. And that's why I added another layer here with the tray. And it also holds the collets. So you could really adjust this thing any way you want. Add another layer, make it wider to add more slots. And maybe you want to make the thing fit a different tool, maybe a Dremel tool or something like that. But it's really, really a handy thing to have. Now I can have this right here at my workbench. My tool is easily accessible with all the bits. So I can see everything I got easily, pull it out, install it, and do my work. So that's it. If you like this project, give this video a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. See you next time.